friends, my name is Educator Katie and I'm the Education Coordinator here at Zoo Montana. And today we're going to be talking about animal adaptations. Now adaptations is a scientific word that can have many different definitions. So today we're going to tell you our definition and show you a mammal and tell you about their adaptations. So here at Zoo Montana, we like to say that an adaptation is a trait either physically on an animal's body or behavior that they do that helps them to survive. And this trait is heritable, which means it can be passed from parent to offspring. Now, an example of this would be the amazing canines of a African lion or the very curly and really cool horns on a bighorn sheep. Or it can be the behaviors of the birds like peacocks that spread out their feathers to look all cool. Today, we're going to be looking at the adaptations of a mammal. Now, mammals are the group of animals that are warm blooded, they ha usually have hair of some kind, they have live young, and they feed those live young with milk. Nearly all mammals have all this in common. Today, you're gonna to be meeting a pretty awesome mammal, and we're gonna talk be talking about her adaptations. This is Bandy. Bandy is a three-banded armadillo from South America, pretty cleverly named because she has three bands on her back here. But armadillos, there's about 20 different species of them. Only one lives here in the United States. That one is called the nine-banded armadillo for, you guessed it, nine bands on its back. The rest of the armadillo species live in South America across all sorts of different habitats. This particular one lives south of the Amazon rainforest in countries like Brazil and Argentina. Right off the bat, you probably can tell her major adaptation is her shell, right? This shell is made of bony plates covered with keratin. Keratin is that material that your hair and your fingernails are made out of, and it's so tough that even rhino horn is made out of keratin. And it's very strong. She has five bony plates, this one here, these three, and this one here, that are connected to her. But her spine is not a part of it, like it is in a turtle shell. However, it is still a very good adaptation for her. And unlike many other armadillo species, the three-banded armadillo can actually completely roll up into a ball. Only this and one other species can do that. That's because their head has armor, their tail has armor, and the way that their plates are arranged, they can roll up, tuck in their arms and legs, and their tail and their head armor go right next to each other and they're a complete ball. Now they can't roll themselves around, but it is a great adaptation nonetheless. They're pretty much safe from any predator because they're pretty good sized. Now I mentioned earlier that mammals have hair. Not all mammals have hairs that keep them warm, right? Many mammals have hairs for other reasons, including this armadillo here. You see the hairs that stick out the side of her body, and when she's running like this, you can see her hairs on her belly. And I promise she is not upset. She just has lots of energy, like a little sibling when they wake up from their nap. I woke her up because she is a nocturnal animal, and she is having lots of energy that she's showing us right now. But those little hairs on her body, they are sensory hairs, kind of like the whiskers on a cat or a dog. They help her to sense her environment. She is what we call a semi-fossorial animal, meaning she spends a lot of time underground in burrows. So she can use these hairs when she's underground to sense the ground underneath her to see if there's any insects underneath her, which is what she eats. She's an insectivore eating insects like ants and termites. And she can sense them underneath her and be able to back up and munch on the insects in a tunnel when she can't see very well. They also can help her if there's a larger predator coming after her. When she's tucked into her shell, she can't see very well, she can't hear very well. So these little hairs stick out the side, again, like whiskers, and let her sense her environment to see if there's anything nearby. Now finally, to find those bugs that she eats, she uses a couple of different senses, but her main one are her ears. Her ears are actually pretty big for her body size. And those big ears, kind of like if you cupped your hand like this behind your ear, my voice is going to sound louder, even though I'm not speaking louder. And that's because your hand is helping your ear gather more sound. That's why her ears are shaped like that. And that's why they're so big. They help her hear up to a few inches underground, which is amazing. Also, they can fold up next to her head so that she doesn't have ears sticking out when she's being balled up to protect herself from a predator. All right, your task now is to pick your favorite mammal, do some research, and tell your teacher some of its adaptations. Bye for now.